Good morning, everyone. My name is G. Sivari Kran. I am a student professor of Civil Engineering Department, St. Martin's Engineering College. Today, I am discussing about the topic, Design of Slabs. So, design of slab. So, slab is an almost structural element used in the design of construction of buildings. So, today we are going to discuss what is slab, so different types of slabs, and how the new mechanism of the slabs, and how we will design the slabs. And what are the minimum principle uh, guidelines to keep the depth of the slab, spacing of the slab, and what is the minimum percentage of reinforcement unit in the slab, and the clear cover of the Slab. These are the topics we are going to cover today. So, what is meant by slab? Slab is a, one of the structural elements. It's a 2D or planar element used as a roof also, used in construction in the commercial buildings, residential buildings. Okay. And uh, next one, types of slabs. So, types of slabs. So, different types of slabs will be one way slab. And second one is two way slab. And third one is flat slabs. So these are the different types of slabs. So one way slab is nothing but that. It depends upon the aspect ratio. L by L x. Greater than two. If the ratio of the L y. L y is the dimension of the longer span. L x is the dimension of the shorter span. So usually two dimensions will be there for any two element. So this will be the L y, this will be the L x. Always take longer direction as L y, shorter direction as L x. If we do the ratio between this L y and L x, if we get greater than two, that is known as one way slab. If we get less than or equal to two, L y by L x less than or equal to two, that is known as two way slab. So it mainly depends upon the aspect ratio. And third one is the flat slab. Flat slab is totally different, used in commercial buildings or high rise buildings or airports. So usually, usually the slab will be supported on walls or beams. So the beam will be supported on columns. So usually slab, some beam, some column, and two beams, and ground. So, some beams will be supported on beams. So, usually one way slab and two way slab will be supported on beams or walls. But in flat slab, it is directly supported on columns. There will be no beams, so it will be directly supported on columns, and the design of the slab is totally different. Okay? So, it is used in heavy loads, and heavy loads are used in commercial buildings. So, these two will be used in residential buildings. So today we are going to discuss about one way slab and two way slabs. Okay, next. How will we do load materials? How will we do the load mechanism? So load mechanism. How will we do the load mechanism? Means? So one way slab is L by L x. Greater than two. Suppose take this slab. So take it as L by Okay, it will always slab. Always the distribution of load will be only in one direction. Always the load distribution only in one direction. Either in one direction or either in the next direction. But in two way slabs, this is the main difference in one way slab. Okay, but in two way slabs. The load mechanism will be different. Okay, the load mechanism will be different. Suppose if we apply load here, this load will be taken by this beam. If we apply load here, this load on the slab will be taken by this beam. If we apply load here, this beam will take the load. So usually the bending may occur in two directions. Either in M Y, either in M X. Not in either. In both directions, the bending will be occur. So in one way slab, only one direction, the bending will be occur. 
So we have to provide the main direction in the shorter span. Always the main reinforcement will be provided in the shorter span. Main reinforcement. So distribution reinforcement will keep the minimum percentage of steel. Okay. In two-way slab, the both the reinforcement will be the main reinforcement. So we will find out the bending in X direction, we will find out the bending in Y direction. So there will be a bending moment in X direction and there will be a bending moment in Y direction. So we have to provide the reinforcement in both these sides. Okay, this is the main reinforcement, this is the distribution reinforcement, but we have to call it as main reinforcement. So we have to find out the reinforcement in both the direction. So before going to design, this is the load mechanism. So next we will go to design of stars. So design of stars. Design of stars. So before going to design of the stars, we have to we have to know a few design principles to design the stamps. So as per India standard, there is a code book, IS 4 by 6 In the code book, so this is a code book name and this is the revised year 2000. In this code book, there are few certain principles. We have to follow those principles and we have to design the stamp. Suppose if you fail to follow this principle, whenever the Building is collapsed or any failure occurs. They will see all the inspection will be done. What are the dimensions of the glass they are used and the clear color they are used and the spacing they are used. So if it is according to this principle, there will be no uh, action against the structural engineer. Suppose if it is failure according to this principle, there will be some action. So we have to follow this as 4 by 6 to 1000. So for IS 456 2000, so for slabs, there is a first principle is clear cover. So clear cover will be provided below the main reinforcement. Okay. So this clear cover, first slab, they will be used 20 mm. But as for IS 456, minimum 15 mm we have to use. 15 mm. So we have to use clear cover. This clear cover is used for safety against corrosion and fire protection. So we have to use this clear cover. Okay. So next condition. So next. Percentage of steel. So percentage of steel. What is the minimum percentage of steel used for slabs? So for FP250 bars. So for FP250 bars, we have to use the reinforcement as 0.12% of cross-sectional area. So 0.12% of cross-sectional area means 0.12500 into what is the width and there will be some depth of the slab. So if we multiply this term, there will be some x will be come. So this X should be minimum for steel we have to provide in the slabs. If, suppose if it is less than X, we have to provide minimum X. Okay, this is the percentage of the steel. So, this is from FP2. Similarly, if you go for FP415 or FP500, we have to use 0.12% of BT. So, for this, 0.15% of BT. Okay, so this is the percentage of minimum steel. And the diameter of the bar, diameter of the bar. Usually the diameter of the bar will be 1 by 8 of the thickness of the slab. So 1 by 8 of D of thickness of the slab. So 1 by 8 of thickness of the slab or well number. So for slabs it should not exceed more than 12 well number. It should not exceed more than 12 well number. It should not be less than a number. For distribution bars, we will use 10 mm. For main bars, we will use 12 mm. It should not reduce this H Y Z bars. So we have to use 12 mm, 10 mm, 10 mm. 
like spacing of the box. So we provide the So these are the main ranges. This is the main range. So this bar should be 12 mm diameter. This bar diameter should be 12 mm diameter. And the spacing of the bars. Center to center of the bar should be 3 D or 300 it should be less than 3D or 3D. It should not go beyond 3D. Okay, next one. This is the distribution box. Distribution box. Okay, this should be 11 mm or 10 diameter. Suppose if you use 12 mm here, we can use 10 mm there. Or for uniformity, uniformity, you can go for other numbers. Okay, this is the spacing of the box. This spacing also should be 3D or 300. It should not be more than 3D or 300. So, if we get 400 and 450, take it as lesser value, whichever is the lesser value. If you get to lesser value, there will be a more amount of reinforcement. If you have more amount of reinforcement, there will be no serious reinforcement. Okay, not bending there. So that's why we will provide the info. Next, space. How we will find the space? I will go into diameter of bar I is into hamper. This is a formula we are going to do as to the system form. H is the area of the steel. What we call it for the bending moment. We will get the H. Parallel to what is the diameter of the energy? 12 square or 10 square. Next 100 mm is the percentage. To get the spacing, we will work the we will work. We have to know this formula. So these are the basic principles to find out the uh, design of surface. Next we will go to steps involved in the design of surface. So what are the different steps involved in design of SAMS? So first basic step one. So whenever we feel get any problem or anything, first we have to know the type of this lab. So before going to the type of this lab, you have to write the given data. Given data. After that, we have to know the in this only you will get to know type of Type of slab, so that is one way to do it up to that. Okay. After getting the type of the slab, you have to know the effective slab. How will you get the effective slab? By according to the base number 32 of IS456 2000. So we will get the type of the support we are whether it is simply supported, can be or not. Fixed support. According to the size, we will get the effective span. So, after we go to the effective span, effective depth. Span by the ratio. Seven, twenty-one, twenty-six. So, these are the three different uh, uh, constants given in the I four five six. This is for cantilever beam, this is for simply supported beam, this is for continuous beam. Or slab, we can use both the same constants 7, 21, and 26. According to this span, we have regulated the effective span or clear span will be given the question. How 
not proper by using this square span or the vector span. Taking this b to the LHS and this constant to LHS, we will get to know this effective depth. So, we will find out the effective depth. After small d, we have to calculate capital D. Capital D means small d plus clear power plus half of the diameter of the speed. So, d, d quadrant to the d will be clear. D plus clear power. Clear power we will use. So after 50 mm we will go for the power of the diameter of the steel. Next after finding the, we will get to know the loads. What are the different types of loads? Live load, dead load. If we are above building the acting, any wing load, we will take the wing load and we will uh, add all those loads. We will get the total load. And we will design the total load for design load into 1.5 times. 1.5 times the total load. So we will get the design load. So for the design load, we will find out the bending moment shear step number 5 loads bending moment and shear force after finding out the bending moment shear force for this bending moment we have to find out the AC computed the speed for this shear force we have to find out the we have to check whether it is a beyond or below the tau v less than tau c or tau v greater than tau c if it tau v is greater than tau c, we have to redesign the slab or we have to increase the depth of the slab. Here we will find out the depth of the slab. So we have to increase the depth and we have to find out the redesign the slab. After finding, we have to find the deflection check. So in deflection check, we will get the constants like kt, ac, kf and modification factor. So if it is allowable, if it is crossing the allowable limits, we have to redesign the slab. Suppose if we are getting below the the pressure limits will, will go with the reinforcement. So these are the different design procedures for the slab. Thank you.